So the third tool that I want to show today is ResearchGate. And ResearchGate is very similar to academia.edu. The biggest difference between the two actually is in its origins. Academia.edu was originally created in the United States. It had received some venture capital funding. And as you've probably noticed with the ads on the video that was in the previous section and some of the other social networky things about it, the premium aspect to it, it is a little bit more commercial. Whereas ResearchGate was actually developed in Europe, it was developed through government grants, and it tends to be much less commercial in nature. So we're going to sign up here, and you can see like academia.edu. At the front, I can connect it through my LinkedIn or my Facebook, or I can join for free. So what we're going to do is we're going to click join for free. And it asks me if I'm an academic or student, corporate or government, medical, or just not a researcher. And in this case, I'm going to say I'm an academic, and you would write in Toro University, California, as well as your unit here, and then you would click continue, and then you would type in your name, your institutional email, and then you would create a password for this service. And I would recommend that you don't use the same password that you've used for your Toro University California institutional accounts. As soon as you hit continue, you'll notice the first thing that it does is it tries to identify if there are any papers already in its database that may have been uploaded by a co-author or someone else to determine if they are you. In this case, this is not me. So, and it'll go through and look, there's another one it finds. And yes, I am the author of that one. And here's another one. No, that's not me. That's not me. And as you can see, it'll go through this for quite a long time. So one of the things I'd recommend is if you've gone two or three times and you haven't found anything that is actually you, I would just click on the continue button at that point. And we're going to say that no one recommended us. That way it just takes us there quicker. So we can pick our disciplines here if you want to. And you don't have to do this. You can see that based upon what we've already selected, they've added some in for us. But we're just going to skip this step. Similarly, you can add in specific skills and expertises if you want to put them in there. But we're also going to skip this step for the time being. And then it asks you to upload a picture and we're going to skip this step for the time being. So once you get through that, it'll actually ask you to go to your institutional email address to verify your account, and until you do that, you won't be able to move any further. So once you verify your account, this is the basic page that you end up in. So you'll see you automatically receive a a notice so someone's requested already six minutes ago a full text version of the paper that it found that was one of ours and we can look at that request and fulfill it at some point we can also notice that there is a couple of notices that we have here so we can click on this and it says that it's found some citations of our article some of them are from a couple of months back as you can see so it's providing us some of the information already so as you look here you also have the ability to add in some additional information in terms of your about me you'll notice we skip things like discipline and skills and expertise initially but you can see that we have, you know, your what are you working on, what languages do you speak can be added in there. Um, as we scroll down, you're providing some of the additional information. And then here's our article, and it asks us we can actually put in additional things. One of the things that you're going to want to do after you've completed putting together your profile is you're likely going to want to add more new research. And one of the things that ResearchGate does that Academia.edu didn't do was it actually categorizes things for you. So as you can see here, I want to put in published research, and in this case, I'm going to put in a thesis. And I can click on that, and it'll ask me if I have a public file I want to share. So I'm going to go click that, and I'm going to go to my public files, and 
add that in and you can see it's uploading here now it'll ask me if I have the right to share this publicly and I'm going to click on that and then say upload and it's now uploaded it and again you can see it's actually pulled out some of the information in there although you want to check against it to make sure that it is accurate so as you can see here um, it's pulled in a lot of information off of the cover page but only this part here is the actual title so I want to go in and edit that it's pulled in all of the reviewers that were looking at the paper so I want to remove those people as well it's given it a specific date and in this case I just want it to have it a year so 2016 and now I can click on continue and it'll ask me some additional information so I can put in the abstract, I can put in the degree that it was for, I can put in the supervisor's name so I'm going to take a minute to do that now and once I've got that done I'm going to click add so it asks if the item has a DOI right now or does ResearchGate want to generate a DOI for it in most cases you'd probably want to generate a DOI in this case because Athabasca University has an identification to their documents I'm gonna say no it'll ask if it's part of another project and if there are any collaborators in this project in this case it wasn't from a project so you can gives me a summary here of what I added and then I can either view that thesis or add more research so I'm gonna click on view the thesis and you can see here now here is the profile for that thesis and it goes through and it actually extracts all of the figures and tables from the document for us so that we can actually take a look at them here and here is the full text of it available right here and it asks if I want to test a new feature to see if there are any references in I'm not going to bother with that right now and I'm just going to scroll back up and we can click back on my profile and we're back on my main page. Now, one of the things that I want to come back to is you'll remember someone was asking about a full text request that I have here. And if you remember, there was an item that when we first created the account that was automatically added to our profile because it found it for us but it didn't find obviously the full text so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on view request and see okay this person's requested this article so I'm gonna respond and I have the full text that I can share and I am have the option of either uploading it so that it gets added to my profile so that it's there for anyone to see or I can just upload it and send it to her directly and she's the only one that would get access to that in this case I'm going to select and upload it as a public file and it's uploading it there and it's again asking if I have the right to do that and it's also storing a copy in there so that um, asks if I want to store a copy so that I can share it with others I don't need to do that because I'm putting it up publicly and I'm gonna click upload and it's thinking and now it should be there so when I click on my research and I look down here you'll see that now the full text for that particular article is available now and you can see the full text for the other item that I added is available and that is the basic steps to creating an account in ResearchGate and that brings us to a close for today's session having looked at Google Scholar, Academia.edu and ResearchGate.